My name is Aiden Webb, and today I'll be talking about the immortal jellyfish, or the Turritopsis dornii. A brief life history. Again, the scientific name is Turritopsis dornii. This species was first discovered in 1883 in the Mediterranean Sea. This species only grows up to 0.18 inches, which allows it to be an excellent hitchhiker. It frequently ends up in the ballast water of ships or in ocean currents, so it's easily spread around the world and is now found in every ocean. This actually makes it a concern as an invasive species, but any potential impacts of that are unknown. These jellyfish are biologically immortal, so the only way that they will die is if they are eaten by something else. They are able to revert back to a polyp stage after reaching sexual maturity. Other species of jellyfish are also able to revert back to a polyp stage, but they can only do so before reaching sexual maturity. This picture on the bottom right is what the polyps look like. How do they do this? Scientists don't really know because they didn't know that immortal jellyfish were able to do this until 1990, so there's not much research that has been done on it. But one recent study found that compared to a similar species that's not capable of this unique feature that immortal jellyfish are, that immortal jellyfish have double the genes associated with gene repair and protection. They also have mutations that allow for stunting of cell division and preventing of breakdown of telomeres, which T. rubra did not. And this diagram on the right is showing the life cycle of the immortal jellyfish. So they start off with a normal life cycle as a polyp and a medusa, but after reaching sexual maturity, they can revert back to a polyp, and they would do this for any reasons such as environmental conditions not being favorable, a lack of food, or simply old age. So to do this, they turn into a cyst, which is the bottom part of this diagram, and then they transform back into a polyp. So the animal doesn't actually die at any point during this process. Potential human implications. Most research is very recent and it's ongoing, so there's no known benefits yet but there's definitely research on many potential uses. The first question a lot of people ask is about human immortality, and the answer to that is no, because jellyfish and humans are not very closely related, so we're not going to see any immortal humans anytime soon. But it can certainly be used for cancer research, like many other jellyfish species and as well as muscular diseases and genetic disorders. It's also used potentially for regenerative medicines. So rather than having to replace an organ, for example, the scientists believe that they would be able to use this jellyfish to allow humans to regrow or reestablish an organ so that it can function again without actually replacing it, which is pretty cool. And it's also thought that they could use it to prevent or better many diseases that are associated with aging. Here are my works cited. If anyone has any questions, feel free to email me. My email is on the bottom right corner.